Whoa, buddy, everybody. Let me warn you, this might be a long video. I'm just going to play my trip in its entirety. I did a lot of palava. I chatted a bit. I wanted to have a conversation with you. Oh! Oh, buddy! I am on the trail, on the snowbank trail. Oh, boy, the torrential rain all the way up. Just really quit raining. Uh, just a little drizzle right now. That's like 62 degrees. Feels great. Loving being out here. Looking forward to testing this Haven hammock. Got the grouse family up here. There's one back there. I think Mama's getting ready to bow up on me up here. Hello. Hey there, little fella. Hello. Hello, little feller. I'm just passing through, fellas and mama. This trail is pretty rocky. And in this rain, they're really slick. It's kind of funny how the woods change all the time when you're up here. And every time I do this trail, I, there's, there's so much of it I remember. And there's so much of it that I don't remember. Nice day hiking in the rain. I mean, it's kind of fun to do sometimes. Woo, buddy! That there is Wooden Leg Lake. Wooden Leg Lake. I think this would be a good time to give a little shout out to a friend of mine's father, Johnny Tall. Johnny Tall, you're gonna have to learn to dance a different way, my man, but you can do it. Thinking about you out here as I'm tripping over all these watermelon and cantaloupe sized rocks that are wet all over the trail, getting it on on this soggy day. Finally got a little break from the rain and I was thinking about Johnny Tall. Shot it tall. Well, I'm getting close. I see the see all the red pines down there, and that lets me know that I'm getting ready to walk into the Alter Rock site. Please, please let nobody be there. And who would be? out here on a 61 degree rainy day <laughs> I don't know I'm gonna set up the tarp still drizzling but I'm here I'm happy to be here this is where I want to be in a little nirvana of solitude <laughs> I was a bit clumsy on that, but I got it done. Yeah. Woo, buddy! It is a chilly 56 degrees. And it is still raining as I sit here in the haven. So I was asking about that. This thing has pockets galore. It's got a big pocket at the foot one there. And a big pocket right there. Got a little pocket right there. And then it's got the same at the other end. Big pocket there. I got a pocket right there. And there's a pocket over here. And I am looking out into Newfound Bay. And I just got changed into all my dry clothes. And man, does that feel a lot better. It was a, it was a good walk out and uh, really slippery. You know, zipped that pack all the way up to keep some heat in. I was just kind of wearing one of my thin little shirts, but I'm trying to keep everything dry. But I'm all high and dry now. It feels great to be out here and just have some solitude from the world. Look forward to sleeping in the Haven. And uh, one thing I didn't mention in the last video is, you know, this thing is pad specific. And the pad that it comes with, as you can see, it's got the, uh, instead of the baffles that go up and down, instead of having the longitudinal uh, baffles, longitudinal? Longitudinal? Um, it has the baffles that go side to side. Non-longitudinal? And that's very important with this. I did throw my REI Stratus in it once, which has the longitudinal baffles, the baffles that go from head to toe, as I'd rather say. It just kind of 
curled up on me. Wasn't that comfortable. So that's just one thing about it. Looking forward to sleeping tonight. It's supposed to get a wee bit chilly. It might be 49 degrees. I got a 40 degree top quilt though. My jacks are better. Ultra light orange top quilt. Got a lot of orange going on here. I'm gonna have myself something to drink, get warm, and uh, think about dinner. And I brought me some slices of pizza. We had some pizza from John's last night and haven't had it in a while, but I don't know what came over me, but I got some Hawaiian pizza. I was in the mood for it with some extra onions on it and it was mighty fine. And I, I do like that from time to time. I'm usually a pepperoni and onion guy or pretty much anything. Got myself a little Swiss Miss chocolate hazelnut cocoa. Man, I had to put everything on. There's just a little light breeze coming through, so hopefully this cocoa's gonna warm me up. But uh, kind of funny how I can go winter camping, but you get out here in 56 degrees in the rain with a light breeze and been wet all day, and you just get a little, uh, I probably said the word chilly a million times, and now I'm thinking of chilly. Thanks, Skeeter. Oh, it's cocoa time. Cocoa time in the woods. Gets to do an old shug some good. I can feel it going to my toes. I can feel it going to my nose. Getting warm all over me. I look out there. Snowbank Lake, I see. Feeling good sitting here in the rain. I've only got some light mild pain. I had wet boots from walking through beaver dams. My name is Shug. Oh, yes I am. Coco time in the woods. That is what I needed. Excellent being out here, man. Ah, the world is good here, man. Just me in the woods, slippery rocks, nice cool breeze, and little raindrops. Some solitude right here. in the backwoods hood. And then my wife Meg actually made me some chocolate cookies with Heath Bar pieces in it. Never done that for me on a camping trip. Said she wanted me to be happy and at peace. I don't know, I'm a little bit suspicious. Yeah, and I've done eating two of them. Kinda heavy, I gotta get these eaten today. All right then, got my food bag hung up for the night, and I'll jaunt out here in the morning, grab it, get me breakfast, getting down to the end of my chocolate peanut butter pap tarts. When I finish um, this box, that'll be it. They don't make them anymore. I'm gonna have to go to the brown sugar cinnamon, possibly the strawberry. There's the fire pit rock. Fairly acrobatic. Oh, I got a pretty good view from this thing. Bug net deployed. Toasty warm now. Feels good. Oh, I turned that thermosel off and all these little skeeters are flying around now, but um, the net is keeping them well off me. And that I like. I like that a lot. Well, did I sleep well in this thing? I think I did. I slept till 9 in the morning. And I'm pretty sure I crashed out before dark last night. I was laying here. I think my last shots were through the mosquito net. And boom. Good night, Rip Van Shug. So, uh, yeah, I got 11 or 12 hours of sleep. Yeah! Because I've been sort of dinking around this morning. 
hanging a few things out to dry. Rained all night long. Uh, according to my little thermometer, I think the low was uh, 55 degrees. I'll have to double check that. It's, you know, I only got my permit for two nights up here, so I'm excited because I'm going to have the skillet biscuits and sausage gravy from Packet Gourmet. Never really had this one because it entails a little work. I'll be making these little drop biscuits. This is way. I brought this one. Not very big, but I think I can cook them little biscuit things in it. And it was kind of buggy when I woke up and I was sort of sitting up here looking at stuff and, uh, you know, kind of moving things out of the way and doing a little morning re-engineering. Where did you go, Shug? Where did you go? It was, it was pretty buggy out, but again, I brought my, uh, you know, <laughs> they didn't give me this. I bought this with my own money. They don't sponsor me. I was talking pretty, uh, pretty big about it last trip, but man, I just lit it up. And uh, it really pushed those mosquitoes away. And they were kind of all over me. It was natty. I do love when a big bug goes by. I don't like mosquitoes doing that, but like a bumblebee or a bee, I love it. Top quilt kept me nice and warm last night because it was chilly with the little breeze. And I, I was just, I just didn't feel like stepping out in the wet and messing with my tarp, so I didn't. And just left it up and zipped up the bug net and that kept the wind off of me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I... I do have a two-pack. I don't know why they're sitting in this tinfoil. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I think I was wrapping some tinfoil around it to give it a little bit more support so I don't crush them as much. A little experiment I was doing. And I had pre-wrapped these for a trip and never brought them, so there you go. Going nutty. Mm. Oh, delectable. Chocolate peanut butter pap tattle. Don't know if I mentioned it, but, you know, I was kind of expecting to get condensation in this thing, in this haven, because it's made out of this PU, which is kind of like what your tarps for your old tents are made of. Definitely not as breathable looking as all the hammocks I have. Plus sleeping on this pad, and I got no moisture. None at all. None on my back, none on my body. I think that's a positive. I see a beaver skitting out there across the water. Moving too. Is that a beaver? I, I gotta take a look at that. I was hoping it was gonna crawl up and I could see it. Yeah, but that was exciting. So I came on this trip really just to Kind of try this hammock out, get out of the house a little bit. Backpacking's a lot of work. Like, that was a that was a pretty good walk yesterday. Not in length, but in concentration of all the rocks. Like I said, the trail is just full of rocks, and it's full of, like, cantaloupe-sized and watermelon-sized rocks and smaller and jumbles of them. And the way my boots were slipping, you know, you're out by yourself. You just got to kind of be careful. And uh, the trail was maintained pretty well. Looked like somebody had been out here and whipped it in a... You know, whipped all the weeds down in a pretty tough section, so thank you for that. I hope that was fun for you. I hope you got to camp out here and do it, whatever group that is. I've heard tell there's a, a group of Mennonites that come up here and help uh, clear a trail. And uh, thank you. Good mid dog, if, if that applies. I wanted to plan a bigger walking trip, but I'm going to do that maybe in August. I might even come back up here and loop this again. Or go out to disappointment. I did it last spring of 2019 or 2018. It was a great trip. I remember it was muggy weather. So I was probably doing it before all my all my fare started. But you know, I think about backpacking a lot, and I'm I'm a guy that's lucky enough to get to do several kinds of trips. I get you know. A few in the fall, a few in the spring, a few in the winter. Summer is not my favorite time to camp, mainly because right now the Superior Hiking Trail, it's at its peak season. Every report I've read lately, uh, everybody's having to share sites. And I don't mind sharing a site, but sometimes you just want to go with solitude. So that's why I'll pay the, uh, pay the fee, come up here into the Boundary Waters. I don't mind paying it because I get the solitude. There aren't people everywhere. There aren't trail markers. It's just quieter. It's so quiet up here. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes I like to do some walking. 
Sometimes I like a lollygag trip. Sometimes I go on a trip like this one going, I kind of know where I'm going to go. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't have enough time to, you know, if I was really wanting to come up here and loop this thing in two nights, I'd have to work way too hard. And I've noticed as, I, as I'm getting older here in my 60s, man, I, I just don't have the speed or uh, I, I've got to walk slower. And I've always dreaded the day that I got to become a slower walking guy, going up hills, going down hills. When you're young, crank those miles out. Do that through hike. Do I, it, you know, I often think I might through hike in one shot the Superior Hiking Trail someday, but I, I really got no interest in through hiking, you know, the Appalachian Trail or the CDT or the PCT or the DDT or the NBA, or the NCA, I, I just don't, I, I like my wife too much, I, you know, I, just, I don't know if I like the woods that much, <clears throat> you know, if it ever got into me to go do it, I would, but I think I could do the Superior Hiking Trail in three weeks or something like that, so that, that seems like something good, and I'm in my own state, you know, if I need to get home, so, or my wife could come up on the North Shore and join me, and we could, you know, um, meet at a resort one night, and I could have a zero day, all right good coffee man good coffee good chat thank you oh yeah that is very hickory like he's a man that always strings a clothesline and i just use his but the sun is right there coming from up there and i'm hanging here as you can see i got a beautiful view but everything is damp and wet my earth sack my knee brace Trying out my packa. It'll be nice to have my panties dry, and my t-shirt dry, and my rain hat dry. Saves a little weight. So there's where I hooked my Dutch beaner and my whoopee sling up to the haven. And just using my regular old tree straps there. And really nice having my own tarp because I just have a lot more coverage and can hang out. So that worked out pretty slick. When you're laying in this thing, now let me turn it around so I can show you this way. You know, your arms do, at least mine, kind of press against this part. And if you look at Derek's setup video, you want to get your hips about right in the center of this hammock. So you end up pressing there. I've gotten used to it. If you sleep with your arms behind your head, you have a lot of room. One thing I did do this morning since I was sleeping so long, I, I don't roll on my side. I'm not necessarily a side sleeper that much at home even. I might go on there for 15 minutes, but I end up on my back. But I kind of rolled on my side and slept on my side a little bit. And it just, it was comfortable on the pad. And But you know, every hammock has its pros and cons. You know, it's like people say a bridge hammock is good for people that get shoulder squeeze. Well, it works for some people and for some people it doesn't. So... There's really no 100% guaranteed you're going to be comfortable in any hammock. The tent, you know what you're getting. Throw it on the ground, throw your pad in, go to sleep. And, you know, you may be on a, you may be listing, you may be on a rock. I mean, you know, same thing. Never perfect in a tent. You honestly and always get a great night, and you get a few that are lousy. And sleep-wise in this thing, I'm hung comfortably and everything, so... uh with that 24 inch wide pad, I'm right on the edge for myself. But the good news is that they're gonna try to develop one that's maybe a couple of inches wider. I'm not really sure. It's just like what the Amok did. They ended up making a longer one after a while. But you gotta give a company time. I mean, they're doing all they can just to get this one up and running. And of course, they were victims of one of those scams where people show a picture of that. It's like you can get it for, I didn't really see it much, but enough people have reported and it was on hammock forums for $39 or something. And then you sign up to get that with its tarp and its suspension and they send some other cheap hammock. You don't get that. That's, that's way too much uh, complicated machining and design for somebody to knock off completely. So they have gone through their scam and uh, it's not on them. That's just the way of the world now. You put out a product, someone's going to copy it, sell it for cheap, or someone's just going to take your picture and put it out there and sell it for cheap. I myself, Shug, of the third person, I think they. Sh I was on some Facebook thing, Hicks and about 20 other people sent it, which showed me getting in the Amok and kind of touting it, and it was one of their scam ads. I didn't know. I didn't have nothing to do with it. 
It's just what's going to happen. Cybercrime. It's the new normal. I said that word. Let's just take a minute and look at this instead. Man, looks like some sunken ships down there. That was about the clearest I've ever seen that water. There's my biscuits. And then here's my gravy. I think I made a little runny. But I'd rather have it runny than too thick, to be honest. Actually, that's going to be darn near perfect. I'm excited. Yeah. They give you a pack of olive oil, too, to cook those biscuits in. Goodness gracious, that is some good eating. Bola Condi, that's some good breakfast. That right there is something different that I don't usually have. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I had a good lollygag in camp this morning. It was nice. Dried everything out, ate those biscuits. It was horror. I went for my morning constitutional, and there was a big wolf spider just ready to jump up on me. This is like my summer of wolf spiders. Maybe it's my new spirit animal. So I'm gonna walk on, get to the next site, enjoy it, sleep again. I wonder if I'll sleep 12 hours. But I love this site, it was great here. I had a wonderful time. And it was a really nice day just to stop and, you know, just kinda take my time, enjoy it. And it's nice to have everything dry. Woo, buddy. Get some great views back in this section. Now it's not very maintained. I'm heading on east and uh, pretty grown up. But you know, if you follow the cairns and look around here, or there you have to go. Wah, 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 wah. But you know, you find it. Solitude. What a beautiful day up here. It's about 80 degrees. I got a nice breeze coming through here. And I was looking where uh, me and Hickory camped back here when we did the snow bank. I think 2015. And I was looking where I hung my hammock. And uh, man, I would have been pummeled by trees in that storm. I was kind of back that way. And there's just trees all down. Yes, sir. I'm fixing to have me some of that uh, sriracha tuner. Bold. It's hey, Johnny Tall, let's hear you call. I don't mind at all. I've got these click, 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 click bugs. They I was just filming it. It looks like a cricket and it jumps up in the air and it's got these yellow wings and it goes click 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 and then it lands. 
Kept hearing the noise. Thought it was something rattling on me. They're all over the place. Click, 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 click. There's a click, click, click bug up right over there. Might be wondering about this weird little shirt I'm wearing. <clears throat> well, I took one of my old t-shirts and I cut it off right there. And I, I don't like wearing a t-shirt. I'm in particular about the kind of shirt I hike in. And I like these sort of synthetic sleeveless shirts. But uh, my skin doctor, because of course I think I'm going to die by skin. Um, you know, my shoulders are sticking out all the time. So I cut this shirt up. That way my armpits can still breathe. But I got a little protection just at the top right up here. I got to go get one checked. It, it may even be a melanoma. I hope not. I hope it isn't. I hope it isn't. But I'm going in a month or so. Kind of looks like the melanoma I had before. But um, might be nothing. So that's what I did. And that way I don't get too hot. And my shoulders are protected. And... This shirt dries out really quickly. Looks kind of goofy, but maybe I'm setting a new trend in the woods. Alrighty, camp number two set up. Found me a little spot down here by the water. And that's where you get water, right there anyway, so good and close for that. Seven o'clock. So I laid down in the haven just to just to get out of the sun a minute and just uh, check my lay. Ended up napping for a good hour. Wonderful! Like 12 hours sleep wasn't enough. Now I'm fixing to have my packet gourmet vegetable ramen rescue. Got the water boiling right there on my hillbilly pot. Mm-hmm. And I'll have a couple of my wife's delicious cookies for dessert and here's my trash baggie pack it in pack it out so because you don't have to stop by the ranger station as much with the virtual online permits there's there's a lot of people just uh not taking heed mm. Mm. that ain't no count mm. i hear that i see bread mm. It's just not that hard to take the trash out with you. Give a hoot, don't pollute. Yes, sir. Mmm. I got myself a boil. It's a right pretty boil. Mmm. -hmm. So I am camped right down in there. If I'm gonna get much sunset tonight. The sunset way back that way. I'm sitting here staring at my packet gourmet good day sunshine bowl. I mean we got a we got a good day sunshine for the good day sunshine bowl. You get your whole organic oats with quinoa, mango, almonds, pecans, chia. Chia? Hemp hearts? What? Is that going to make me woozy? Coconut and maple syrup. Never had this one.
It's a nice 61 degrees this morning. Oh, a bird just flew by. Right by my camp. Right, like right there. And uh, I slept probably uh, nine and a half, ten hours. <laughs> so uh, sorry to get that 12. But that sunshine woke me up this morning. And uh, plus I got to walk back to the car because I got to get the Gordy's high hat. But the important thing right now is I'm waiting for my water to boil. So I can put my fat bag of Medagliadoro Instant Espresso into my cup and have it. Man, I woke up and, uh, I mean, I, the mosquitoes were just like, I could hear them from all night long. They were just surrounding me. And I woke up, the first thing I did was light this thermocell. I gotta say, the mosquitoes have abated. Plus I sprayed a little Picardin on my hat. Where's that bird? Hi there. I slept comfortable both nights. I would say it felt, uh, you know, I kept a lot of air in my pad. I could have lit a little out, but I was just kind of too lazy to get up and do it. It feels like sleeping on a pad in a tent, but hanging in the air like this, kind of, at one point I was going, it's kind of like a, a futon. Meg and I slept on a futon for years in New York City. It was our couch. Folded out every day, and it was a futon. To me, backpacking is escapism. And I remember being at a party once. I said, why would you walk? Are you trying to hide from the world? I'm like, no. The world ain't going anywhere. I'm just taking myself and stepping out of it for a little bit, you know? The woods have kind of gotten popular. <laughs> Frankly, I, I look forward to the day when something else gets popular and uh, the trails aren't so uh, crowded with people. But, you know, we always talk about we, we need more people camping so the trails stay alive. And then when we got more people doing it, I don't like all these people on the trail. I'm, I'm the same. Just human nature. All right. Uh, excuse my tirade. Was that a tirade? I think it was just more of a casual conversation like two people at a party. We need that more. I'm just giving you my thoughts, and uh, now I'll sit here and listen to yours. Well, that's a good point. Well, I can see how you could think that. Well, I'm going to have to agree to disagree. I just scalded in my throat. As a society, as a civilization, let's just try to open our hearts a little bit. It's as simple as that. It's not easy. I remember I was getting acupuncture one time when I had my uh, heel spur years ago after a plantar fasciitis injury. And plantar fasciitis is hard to say in the morning. But thank me, thankfully, my medagliadoro got me through that one. You know, um, <laughs> I was getting this acupuncture from this guy named Matt. And that's all he does. He's not a chiropractor who does acupuncture. All he does is acupuncture. <laughs> And he had all the needles in me, and I kind of looked at him, and I said, you're going to mind meld me now, aren't you? He said, yeah, Sean, um, what I need you to do is uh, just try opening your heart a little bit more. Just open it up. And I was going, can I just crack the screen door enough for the cat to get in and out? He was going, yeah, that's, that's good, but that's a start. But open that heart up. Be a little open-minded. Be more open-minded. And I try to be open-minded as an old boomer. And understand millennials and stuff like that. I've watched documentaries on it. They're about experience. They're about different things. Uh, at, at this point in life, I've pretty much taken my keys out of my pocket and handed them over and said, here, somebody else drive the car. I'm just going to sit in the back seat with my seatbelt off and see how this goes. So, uh, yeah, just uh, it, it's not easy because I got to admit, I'm one of these guys. I'm a spirited introvert. I, I kind of keep people out here a little bit. I got a few people... I let them in here, but I, I tend to keep people away a little bit. And I'm trying to bring the hand back here and, and, and let them in some. And sometimes they get in here and they, they go, we like it better out here. <laughs> now, you might have noticed on some of my last few videos, I've been wearing uh, some Formula One gear, particularly McLaren. And let's just say through this whole thing that's been going on, my happy place has been Formula One. And that's racing, if you don't know. It's it's a Euro. You know, what I like about Formula One is I like the Euro vibe. Because, you know, I was born in Northern Ireland. We lived overseas a lot when I was a kid. And, 
you know, when I go back and watch an old race from Monaco and I just see the lay of the land and the signs and the Yardley products and the Martini and Rossi and uh, John Player and Rothmans and Giton and, you know, just to see the architecture of the buildings and see those old towns. It just brings me back to when I was a kid. And I think the cars are beautiful, the evolution of the cars, the evolution of the sport, the evolution of the drivers. When Meg goes to bed at night, I stay up and I watch... Uh, I watch stuff on Formula One. I can go on YouTube. I subscribe to um, F1 TV. So the last three weeks, I've gotten up and watched all the races. And uh, it just, I escape. It just takes me away. I think the cars are beautiful. I love the layouts of the tracks. And it's just my happy place. I've said too much. I will say no more. And now I'll just hush me gob and let you see what I'm seeing. That moment was brought to you by Be at Peace. Yeah, it's the mindset that lets you just sit down and hopefully think of nothing. Be at peace. Be there. You know, I was thinking too while I was laying in this last night, and I'm six feet, and you know, I guess I'm a pretty normal build. And you know, the thing about hammocks, a lot of people get a gathered in hammock. You know, your standard kind of hammock that you sleep in. And I would say more than 50% of them from what I've read and seen and heard and people have told me, get something called shoulder squeeze. You know, you imagine something sort of co cocooned around you and pushes your shoulders in. And often calf ridge, which I've done um, videos on how to alleviate as, as much as you can, where as you're laying in the hammock and your feet are down at this end and the way it gathers, there's a little ridge that runs down the middle and it can press into your leg, sort of the top of your calf right below your knee and sometimes kind of makes your leg go numb or it's just uncomfortable so that happens a lot in gathered in hammocks you got to really work and find a way to work around that some people get it some people don't but i find a lot of people do so they end up switching to a bridge hammock and a bridge hammock you know you're laying like this when you're there is no calf ridge at all in a bridge hammock for some people the bridge hammock and if you don't know that's with spreader bars at each end like this one but they're connected lower so they're just kind of just right back here, you know, almost like your um, typical beach hammocks you see, but without being woven and the suspension is different. That's the closest thing, but that's what a spreader bar is. It's spreading the hammock out. And some people get that to uh, help alleviate their shoulder squeeze, and it doesn't help them, and other people do. So uh, there is no cut or dry on it. This morning I did, because when that sun first came up, I... I rolled over on my side and slept and you know this is a very comfortable side sleeper i've not really laid on my stomach in it as flat as it is i imagine it'd be fine i guess what i'm saying here i think people that sleep in hammocks the hammockers just we're just a pickier bunch uh, in general so you know people are going to find fault in every product you know to the weight the size the comfort the fabric blah 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 blah, blah, blah. you're just going to have to experiment and see I wish I could tell you something easier, but I can't. I'm trying to be truthful to you. But I do like this hammock. You know, uh, it's not going to be my go-to hammock, but I, I like it in my hammock armada, and I will totally uh, use it again. And if I go with a lot of people where I think someone might have to go to ground, kind of look forward to going to ground in it. I don't want to go to ground, but uh, I would. I, I, I do love sitting up and just being able to stand up. And... You know, this, this ridge line on this thing of pulling yourself up is really helpful. Again, I've said too much. I hope I haven't bored you to death. You know, I've done so many videos on hammocks. That quite frankly... Oh, hey, man. Hey, bird. How you doing? Yeah, pretty bird. I, uh... 
you know, I'm just repeating myself sometimes now. You know, I, I do like to update a few, but I've covered everything that I know. Good day, sunshine bowl. It's really good. It's not too sweet. Definitely not sickly sweet. Got chunks in it. The Man, everything's very tasty. Beyond oatmeal. Heartier than that. I like the mango in there, man. It tastes like um, when I was in the circus. We had the, um, the Love Israel. Some people call them a cult. They would come by the circus every day and bring us vegetables and stuff. And I went and visited them a couple of times for the free cinnamon rolls and the hearty breakfast vegetarian dinners and breakfasts. And this reminds me of that. And they told me I would always have a place to come, but you know, I always keep everybody right here, so uh, I'm not culty. But I certainly did enjoy their cooking and their peacefulness and, and understanding. <sighs> wow, man, that fat bag of Medaglia Dodo Instant Espresso. I gotta cut it back next time. I made that bag particularly big, just kind of thinking I'm gonna have just one big fat one on the way out, but I might come out of the box a little too hot. I do enjoy the sound of a woodpecker peckering. That's just backwoods to me. Heard some loons, the crows, quite birdie this morning. Down here in this little uh, holler I'm camped in. I mean, the one thing was, when the sun went down last night, it was Skeeter Town. But between the bug nip, you know, had a couple in there, but they didn't bother me. It was fine, but I could really hear them outside last night. You know, you can hear an audible buzz sometimes up here in the Boundary Waters when the mosquitoes come out about 945. Bring protection. Now that, my friends, is a backwoods Doniker pooper. Fancy lid. You don't see many like that anymore. Having a good walk this morning. It is humid. Uh, it's getting to be, let me see, 78 degrees. Uh, very humid. A lot of the rocks have dried up and a lot of them haven't. Like I say, the thing about this trail kind of have to focus where you're stepping because there's just so many rocks and I don't want to turn my ankle and they're slippery so that takes a little bit of thought. Here or there there's a couple of stretches you can boogie down on but just a beautiful morning to be walking. <sighs> my lucky man. Oh what a lucky man. Sugar am. All right, here's one of the beaver dams you got to cross on this trail. Go do little 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 behind it, then you got to get up on it, and it's really high from the rains. So actually, I just crossed it. It was really raining hard when I came in, so I walked on it. But there actually, you can kind of walk down there behind it. But it's raining so hard, I just wanted to get across it and be done with it. And there's one more coming up. They're kind of fun. Stopped here to water up. And it's about 80 degrees and humid, but I feel the humidity dropping. But one thing I've started doing when it's humid is taking these salt tablets. I used to take these in football practice. They're kind of in a capsule form now. And uh, I find they really help because uh, humidity gets to me. I don't know if it's my Irish background, but my system doesn't like humidity. But just making sure to water up more, be vigilant about that, take a salt tablet. And I'm drinking Picardy Sweat oh, in my water to have some electrolytes. So I'm hiking real good today. And uh, over halfway back to the car, about eight miles. This whole trip is probably a total of 16. So, you know, mid-range, maybe less. Not a, not a major, major hump, but a good walk. And like I said, solitude. I haven't seen a soul out here. 
the only people I've seen was a couple of canoers out in the lake and but nobody on the trail so uh, that I like that I like I gotta look at the salt trail now Okay, salt trail, I just got to see ya, hey, I like it the salt, you like it the salt, hey, big boy. Now, here's the second beaver dam, I just crossed it. This one's a little sketchy, and they built another dam right there, I think, because this dam is holding back some water, and it's kind of a deep gully in there, so you can't really go around it, so be careful. Back to the car, car sitting out in the sun, hot, uh... Changed my clothes already, that felt great. I was drenched. It was about eight miles uh, out, and it was good, good walk, because that's that is a challenging trail. And on to Gordy's hi-hat. Woo, buddy! All secure in Sector 7. Well, here I am, sitting at Gordy's. I'm waiting for my order, and man, it was like uh, getting into a theme park. They got two lines backed up, about a 10-minute wait to get in, and then they they uh, offer you a menu and the guy, like at the airport with a baton, brings you to a spot, you place your order, and get it, and you can go eat at one of the picnic tables. And they're all wearing masks, and I like that, because if nobody was wearing a mask here serving, I would just leave. So, good to see that Gordy's is on the ball, and, um, you know, making it safe and keeping the business going, because, man, I look forward to this burger. Bring a mega fish basket home. Four pieces of fried cod with your fries. Yeah, man. Oh, the beautiful Gordy's Blueberry Milkshake. Oh, buddy, they have good french fries here, skinny and crispy. And there it is. That beautiful double all-American cheeseburger. It's about a, maybe two hours, maybe two and a half from where, uh, from the trailhead to get here, so I've been resisting eating just to wait for this moment. But they got their, um, they got their drive through curb service done really well. It's pretty cool. Oh, time to make you a little bit jealous. Mmm. Goodness gracious, that's good eating. Don't talk with your mouth full. God, that is a classic double cheeseburger. Simple, some onions, some pickles, some cheese, two patties of meat that are hand patty. Oh, it is totally all secure in Sector 7. <clears throat> now, I love their fish here, but I'm more in a burger mood. But I'll be getting some of this fish. That is Meg's fish basket. Four pieces of delicious fish, fries, and of course, my wife wants extra tartar sauce. So yeah, Gordy's Hi-Hat, right here in Cloquet, Minnesota. Pretty close to Duluth. It's so nice right now. After being in the woods, sitting in the shade, about 77 degrees, I'd love to give you a weather report. A little breeze coming through. Everybody kind of social distancing. No eating inside. But man, are they doing business. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Delicious, scrumps, delicious, fabulous. All right. Look at the crunch on that fry. It's got crunch, man. No soggy fry here. I don't take a bite out of that burger right there because there's a rock. There you go. Don't pass it. I did see this place on there one time. I was proud. Hello, everybody. My name is Draculus, and uh, I'm here to talk to you. I am Dracula's cousin. <laughs> that ought to run you off right there. <laughs>